Hello punters and welcome to another preview um, of weekend racing, we're looking at Saturday. We're looking at Caulfield in this first video, there's a couple of really nice races to get through. Uh, we'll be looking at, uh, of course I'm going to be introducing a segment called Around the Tracks, which will be the third video that I'll produce, so I'll be looking at the um, best bets from Doombin and also at Gawler. Uh, racing on Saturday and then also of course in the second video I'll be doing uh, the New South Wales meeting which we are at Rose Hill so we're looking forward to to that uh, on Saturday so just firstly we're into the uh, Caulfield meeting first up here we've got um, nine races to get through on the card at this stage the tracks rated a soft six uh, plenty of rain about today so we ne I'm not. Don't think we'll get into the heavy range, but we might be looking at that soft seven mark. Um, but as such, has been a little bit difficult to do the form here for a Thursday. But um, we'll, we'll give it our best shot. I think um, I've, I've sort of factored into the uh, if it gets in the heavy range as well as the soft seven range. I'm still pretty confident we can find some winners out, out of uh, that sort of weather. Uh, yeah, in those weather conditions. So um, we'll look at the first race here. It's the um, Labbrokes odds boost 1200 meter race uh, for the for the two year olds. Uh, look at the speed map here in this race. Uh, well, say so can't be done or will be forward like it has done its last its first few starts. Uh, so Koshi uh, should be quite forward after its um, first two runs, and uh, also Forever Loud might might be a bit prominent, but pretty sure it'll be a pretty easy lead for can't be done and Sakoshi. So. As such, look, I do think um, Can't Be Done will be really hard to beat. However, I have landed the way of number seven, Avon River. I'm just banking on it getting a bit closer to the run than it did last time out at Caulfield. But uh, it was 1.9 lengths off uh, King of Hastings last time out. Um, and obviously now second up, uh, this horse, um, we, we can really tie in the form there. Because, I mean, Can't Be Done did beat King of Hastings last time out at the Sandown Lakeside track when they broke away at the front. They... Uh, Dueled it out to the finish, but I, I just think um, second up for Avon River might suit really nicely. And if um, Craig Williams can use that barrier to get clo close enough, I think it can run down. Can't be done. There's a big um, can't be done, but carrying 59 kilos, which is um, what it did so last time out was really impressive. But I just think um, Avon River's got that bit bit more um, bit of form on the board. Looking at last preparations, 2.2 lengths off immersement and a in a group three there, four lengths off Castle Vecchio, uh, four point eight lengths off a session, and two point lengths off half high tail. So just for me that the four lines just read up a little bit better. And I think the fact that um, it really closed off really nicely last time out behind King Hastings, only one point eight lengths off, I think it can improve that extra margin and can't be done they just beat King Hastings last time out at Sandown Lakes on track. So I just wanted to swing that way. So uh, number seven, Avon River on top, uh, but if a second number one can't be done, look, it'll be there for a long way. As I mentioned, we'll get a really soft lead um, if, if the speed map comes to, to the way we think it will. And uh, we'll be really hard to run down. It's been um, sitting at $2.70 now. I just thought Avon River would be a bit more value if it can get close enough in the run, if, uh, which I'm banking it will. If Craig Williams smart, he can figure out that Sakoshi on the inside of it will probably be forward and he can follow it up and get it into a nice spot. Um, and in saying that number eight, Sakoshi, I've got in for third. I think this horse, as I said, will get a soft lead. I think it can improve on um, last time out where it was really well beaten by Rumble Doll, which of course turned the tables on its um, on Sakoshi's debut win at Sale. And um, of course, uh, Sakoshi went around dollar seventy last time out at Santa Hillside Track, and really disappointed punters on that occasion. And Rumble Doll just broke away and won pretty comfortably. Um, but the format of that race is okay. I mean, um, McCullum beat Sakoshi on that occasion. And that horse could come out um, at Sandown on Wednesday and ran on quite well. And uh, but look, yeah, the, the form's not super strong. It's not as good as it can't be done and uh, Avon River form. And but I still think with that soft, softly uh, run either outside the leader, which I think it will be outside of can't be done. I think it'll run a good race. And even fourth number two, Champagne Boo. This horse was a really impressive last time out. Uh, running 1.5 lengths off Kia Hastings, had just finished behind um, Avon River as I met, uh, sorry, beat Avon River as I mentioned. But I just think Avon River, River can turn the tables on on it. But it'll be in the finish once again. Oh, it was a really good run last time out, and um, it'll run well again. Uh, number two, Champagne Boom. So recapping the numbers on the first on the card at Caulfield, really do like uh, number seven, Avon River on top. It to beat number one can't be done. 
If for third I do like number uh, number eight, Sakoshi, and if for fourth, number two, Champagne Boom. Race number two on the card, it's a 1200 meter race. Once again, Labros Cash in handicap. Uh, look at the speed map here, say, uh, forbid me not, we'll look to go forward again. Mr. Fire, beautiful fire, will be forward, but I'd say that forbid me not, we'll find them at the top, and maybe tough missiles sit into box, uh, sit in behind a box seat. So, not a whole lot of speed this race, once again, like I mentioned in the previous, unless some of those um, walls from the outside barriers, such as uh, Fragonard, who, who might look to be prominent, I don't think it would lead, but might be um, in the leading division at least, and um, Mr. Five Beautiful Five might press forward, but look, I do find forbidden, forbid me not to get the lead. Uh, look, in this race, a little bit uh, of a tough one to find, but I do think that number three, Miss Iono, is just going to be hard to beat again. It was really good last time out at Caulfield. Beat all about Nicky on that occasion. I won really nicely. Charged home over the, from, over the top of him. Fantastic heavy tracks. Stats, of course. Um, four starts for, for two wins and a placing. Uh, well, of course, that day was rated a soft track at Caulfield. But it re the, the rain really came down that day. And it really got through the ground nicely. And if it, the rain comes again, I think this horse paying over, over the odds once again. Um, and I really want to be on it at the $9. I think it's a really good price. Um, it can back up its performance from last start. It wasn't just a once-off. enjoys the conditions, and I think it'll run well again. And if, obviously, there might be as much speed as what uh, perhaps there was last time, but I do think that it was uh, still a great run and um, is one to take note of and should be winning this race. Um, so I've got it to beat number five, Shah Lane. Uh, probably the... Class horse of the field is probably a bit better than these. Was really good like, running on behind Riverbird last time out. Good four lines there. Riverbird's been absolutely flying in New South Wales. And prior to that one, nicely being ready to profit at Randwick, who of course came out won a Phillies and Mares race uh, after that at Ipswich. So the form's really good behind Charlene. And I was pretty keen on it last start. Um, and it was probably, not, not, not going to say disappointing, but... Um, and Riverbird was really well backed that day and has been flying, so I think the form's pretty good there. So I like Charlene, but Barrier One's a little bit of a concern. It's going to need a little bit of luck, but it definitely will be in the finish, so I've got it in for second. In for third, I do like number uh, eight, Forbid Me Not. I think it could get a really nice time the speed. It really has raced well coming back this prep because it's had two wins in a row. Enjoys the soft going. Uh, so it'll get the lead, gets the weight relief, it goes from 61 kilos that it carried at the Sandout Lakeside win where it beat Undoubtable Miss on that occasion. Down to the 54 kilos, I'd appreciate that. So I just think it's a really nice um, horse to be following into this race as well. So I've got it in for third. In for fourth, I do like number four, Miss Vixen. Um, look, it's not going to get a whole lot of um, tempo to come into the race, but you know, she does project um, possess a really damaging turn of foot. Uh, doesn't like the rain affected going, which is a bit of a concern. That's hence why I've got it in a fourth. Um, if the rain it was obviously to dry up, um, which it doesn't look like doing, uh, it would be well in the finish. But uh, it was really good charging behind Patrol last time out on the soft track. So that was a good run. And based off that, I'm happy to be with it again. Of course, there's only one length off Lady Cosmology in a group three at Morphville. So it's got a lot on these. It just uh, For me, I just really worry about the soft track. And uh, if it wasn't so, um, so rain affected, I'd be putting it on top. But... Uh, for me, just can't go with it on, on its um, soft, on its wet track form. So, recapping the numbers on the second race of the card, I do like uh, number three, Miss Iono, on top to back up its win from at Caulfield from two weeks ago. Uh, to beat number five, Charlene, uh, in for second, in for third, number eight, forbidden me not, and in for fourth, number four, Miss Vixen. Race number three, uh, 1400 metre, benchmark 78. Uh, looking at the speed map in here, there's, there's a stack of it. You've got Arachini and Satori off the inside barriers. They'll be looking to go forward. Let's say King Kabuto from Barrier 8 will be quite prominent. Uh, Ballet Masters usually quite forward. Uh, Wenner will be uh, forward. Let's say Allsford will try and find the top from Barrier 16. So an absolute stack of speed. Special Diva will be up there as well from Barrier 11. So uh, an absolute, uh, uh, really is a lot of speed in this. And Urak, of course, off Barrier 3. Will be um, could potentially look for the front as well. I'm not sure whether they'll decide to take it back from this, all that speed in the race or not. Um, and for me, look, this is just going to set up really well for number 15, Cryptic Jewel. I thought this horse came back brilliantly last time uh, at a Phillies and Man's benchmark 64 uh, first up at Geelong. It beat Miss Entice by 3.3 lengths on that occasion. It was so impressive. It was a very, very good win. And second up stats are really good. Second up, it's had two, a win and a third on under his belt from two starts. It 
doesn't mind the, the rain effect of going to placing on a soft, it's only soft um, track start and has had a win from two on heavy. So we'll, we'll be able to carry through. It's had one at this track before, I did say last preparation with um, knocking off its maiden. Uh, and I just think this horse come back really nicely and um, is going to really appreciate uh, second up here, Craig Williams in the saddle. I think with all the speed in the race, just going to be able to come in and storm over the top of him. So I think that's a really good bet to go for $4.80. So I've got Cryptic Jewel number 15 on top. Uh, in the second, I do like number 6 of your I'm going to give this horse one more chance. I've got a you know, massive rap for this horse. It's cu coming back in class, of course, it was beat by Miss Iono by 7.5 lengths last time out. It was on speed. Looked to have a bit of a kick, but then it just uh, dropped out at the end there. As a, a lot of the leaders did drop out um, in that race, however. So we to forgive there. Um, yeah, obviously, we'll, we'll get a, a bit of a uh, guide on that form of Miss Iron running in the race prior. Uh, prior to that, it was three lengths off pass forward. It was really good charging from the back um, up the straight at Flemington. That was an impressive run. And this horse does, does like the wet going. Look, it didn't do so last time out, but it, really, it usually does enjoy. It's had three starts for two wins. And a win on a, on a heavy track um, as well. And I think if if Ben Mel just brings it back from all that early speed, it might be able to come right into the race and really finish over the top alongside of uh, of Cryptic George, obviously, we'll be hoping. So I think the, the odds are quite good to take at $11. Um, definitely can see it turning the table. So I've got it in for second. Uh, in for third, I do like number one, Lure me in. Now, the only question on this is the the wet, the the um, wet form, but obviously it's had a win and a place on soft going, but has never run on a heavy track. So if we do get in that heavy range, a bit of a query there, and it has to carry 60 kilos, but Michael Poy is riding outstanding at the moment. Uh, was really well beaten by ground break last time out, but just didn't really come on from the back. I think second up would be a lot better. It's had, it's had a win and a placing for second up uh, from two starts, so we're looking pretty good there. And uh, Looking... Furthermore, onto that, look, I do think number two, Grand Break, will be really hard to beat. I think Barry 17 is a real uh, concern for this race. Um, looks, it has a soft track form there. It's had four starts for a win and two placings, and it was really good being more wanted at Flemington uh, last time out. And uh, it will be hard to beat again. Look, I do, I, no knock on it, I just think Barry 17, a little bit of a concern for me. I think Lure Mim will get the better run. That's why, hence, I think it can overturn the tables. But uh, those two will be in the finish as well, I'd say. So, Recapping the numbers on race number three, I do like number 15, Cryptic Jewel on top. In for second, I like number six, Urak. In for third, number one, Lure Me In. And in for fourth, number two, Groundbreak. Race number four on the card, 400 meter race. Uh, looking at the speed map here, I'd say uh, Ep Epaulette Miss and Falls will be uh, going forward from barrier four and five. I'd say Morrissey off barrier eight will be prominent. Don't think you'll find lead. Might look to do what uh, it did last time out. I uh, went winning at Sandown and sort of sitting behind them and looked really power over top late. I'd say fight from barrier 11 will try and get forward and uh, swing around them from the outside barrier. Uh, so there's a little bit of speed on in this. And, um, but I do think of the on-speed runners, I think number two, Morrissey, will be really hard to beat again. Michael Poy is on. The big key here is that Craig Williams on last time. He jumps off and they bring Michael Poy on. But Michael Poy's flying at the moment. He, he's really um, riding a lot of winners. I think this horse was really impressive last time out, beating more than exceed. It was on speed and ran a nice race. And uh, obviously, that, that was on the soft track. So, if get that again, I can't see why I can't win. And I think it would just get that one out, one back cover, get the run of the race, and be really hard to beat. So, I've got it on top. Uh, I've got it on top to beat uh, number one, Smart Alyssum, who, run, who won really impressively last time out at Caulfield. Um, in the, two, in the three old race there, being Twilight Rain, it's a sensational run. Um, and similarly, will be up on the speed. Uh, the wet track stats are, are very good on the soft. Heavy, not so much. So if you do get that heavy range, a little bit of a concern. But what I also want to look at is that this all was eight and a half lengths off Morrissey last time out. I know that they really struggled to make ground that day at Lakes, on the lakeside track at Sandown. But I mean, that, that horse, um, you know, it'll have to be pretty good to overturn eight and a half uh, lengths, in my opinion. But I do have to have it in, not based off that um, last run, last time out of Caulfield, so it, it's in for second. In for third, number six, Tower Road. I think this horse is massively over the odds. Um, it's going to get barrier one, so I'm interested in what Linda Meech decides to do here, but um, I'd say all the speed on, they might take a back ride for a bit of luck, but if it gets that luck, I think it would be really hard to beat. Its first up performance at Warnable was, it was really good, um, and that was, of course, one on a soft track that day, and then... It came out of Fleming, which was a little bit disappointing behind Fidelity, just never ran on from the back. Uh, but comes back, comes the Caulfield, which I think will suit better for Tower Road. 
Uh, two for two on soft, so I think this horse paying massively over the odds. Um, and I just think Little Michi is absolutely fine at the moment as well. So I really do can make a good case for it at the $26. I think it's massively over the odds. So I've got it in for third. In for fourth, number 12, Spartan Flame. Well, this horse really resumed well at um, Sandown Lakeside last time out. And what I can't understand is that almost Nat ran down fight on that occasion from um, back in the field, which is obviously hard to do at um, the Lakeside track. You got fight going around at $3.90, and this horse, Spartan Flame, is going around at, uh, at 15 bucks at the moment, which really doesn't make a lot of sense for me. There's only a point of a length between them last time out. And Spartan Flame was first up, whereas fight's rock hard fit. So I think, yeah, really a bit of a silly price there. I'd be, be willing to have a bit of a go at that each way. Um, has come back really nicely as a gelding, and that was a really good run first up, and I'd be willing to put it in, in, in the numbers as well. So I do like the top two. Um, at the top of the race car, just based off um, off form, and uh, they've got the stronger form lines, and I think they've got a little bit of class, but they've got to carry the weight, so a bit of a concern, so I'm looking to have a couple of each way bets in this as well, so I do like number two, Morrissey on top, uh, to beat number one, Smarter Listen, but really curious on, um, have a big query on number six, Tower Road, and also number 12, Spartan Flame in for fourth. Uh, looking at race number five on the card, 1400 metre race. Uh, looking at the speed map in this one, the absolute stack for Elite Drake and like to think so off the inside barriers will, will hum along and say Hunter Mose will be up there. Uh, Aussie Choice will be quite forward. Interesting to do with Travi, my friend. I think he'll be in a bit of a sticky spot. I might have to just sort of ride up there and try and tuck in. I could, I could see it being three wide, which is a bit disappointing actually because. I would have had it higher up in the numbers, but just that wide gate's really going to be a concern, especially with that speed on the inside. Uh, Organs looks to get a really good run into the race, and as such, I think an Organs is going to be extremely hard to beat. Uh, it's paying dollar ninety-five at the moment, which I think is pretty good odds. Um, was scratched from Flemington last week; it was going to go around favourite there. Uh, look at the four lines; it was point over length off ready to profit last time out. The Phillies and Mares race at Ipswich; that's pretty good form. Prior to that, was put one point three lengths off Renewal at an open race at Randwick, and then. Uh, was in a group three race, Phillies and Mares, that um, was 0.4 of a length off Contepare. So it's been in and around the money. This is the easiest race it's uh, seen in quite a while. Craig wins in the saddle, so I think it's just going to get a perfect run in the race. I think it'll be really hard to beat, so I'm happy to have it on top. Uh, in the second, I do like number five, Nocio, who returned really well last time out at Sandown, the hillside track. Charged over the top of them late, and that was on a heavy track, so. We get that, that heavy track, we know that this horse will get through it, and with all the speed on, it'll be it'll really be humming along home. The only concern is that it has had seven starts this track, only for two placings, but this horse, I think, will, will improve off that first start run. I thought that was a really impressive win, and it could do it once again with all the speed in the race. I've got it in for second. In for third, I like number nine, like to think so. I thought this horse was really good. Um, it was only just beaten by Highland Beat last time out at Caulfield. It will get through the going, um, will be up on speed, make its own luck, and I think it'll give a good kick on. Uh, I think it'll do um, a bit better than what Elite Drake will, just consider, but this horse also has been flying recently, um, Elite Drake, so I've got it in for, in for fourth, uh, number seven Elite, uh, and you know, its last two wins have been pretty good, uh, beating Snipes and then uh, Special Diva, uh, and it's not been around the money, really, this horse, the last five starts, hasn't missed the top three placing, so it should be up there again. Um, and it has barrier one, so I mean, I can see, but just for me, I think like thinks so they can maybe turn the table, so that's sort of the way I'm leading with that. But those two will definitely be in the finish um, on speed. The, of the on speed runners, put it this way, I think they'll be really um, hard to run down. They'll be the ones that will stick on, but I think the two sweepers in Organza and, and Nocio will, will get around them and beat them. Uh, but I'm happy to have them in there. As I said, with number six, Trevor, my friend, I was really keen on it until I saw barrier nine and all the speed of the race. So I think I could see it being tr three wide, no cover, but. It'll enjoy the rain effect of going. It was really good last time out. It's been by a good horse in Bedford who goes around later, and I'm very keen on its chances. So we wouldn't be surprised if this horse runs a good race. Just couldn't fit into my numbers based off uh, the speed map and, and where it will land in the run. I think it'll be three wide and have to do it tough. So recap the numbers on the fifth. I like number three, Organza, on top to beat uh, number number five, Nocio. In the third, I like number nine, like to think so. And in the fourth, number seven, Elite Drake. Uh, race number six is the 2,000 metre race. Uh, looking at the speed map here, I'd say Tabby Run will try to do what did last time out, lead all the way, or be forward. Very dangerous will be up there. Aristocratic Miss will be vying for the lead as well from barrier nine. Uh, Media Rising might use that inside barrier to either box seat or get on the speed. So 
little bit of speed. This grey card, I think, out of uh, Barry Seven will also be quite forward. So they might really get along in this race. And as such, I think it will really set up nicely for number number one, Juna Pal. Uh, this horse has got a lot of a lot of class on its side, and uh, with all that speed in the race, I think it'll come into it really nicely. Uh, of course, it's coming back from uh, Queensland preparation, where it was racing up there. Uh, it's been really lightly raced as well. This horse. Um, just having a look here, uh, just give me a second. Um, and look, look, also I think this horse got a bit of the class on this field as well. So looking at its, at its form lines, uh, obviously it was really good behind Baccarat Baby last time out at the Sunshine Coast. That, that horse was a, sen that was a sensational run. It was three wide, no cover and blitzed them. Um, that was of course in a group three, probably that 2.4 lengths of Colding of course. Um, ran a really good race up there, has been in good form, sorry. And then prior to that, uh, it was three, point, uh, three and a half lengths off Big Night Out up the Flume of Australia, and that was a sensational run by Big Night Out. So this horse, um, I think it's just is in great form. It's coming back in class. I think it'll beat these if it's up to its best and can handle the heavy going. It's, uh, ran, ran on the heavy going uh, once, of course, at the Sunshine Coast, ran really well there. And its stats show that two starts for one win and a placing. It'll handle the... the, tr the the wet track and if it's on a soft I think it'll be just fine as well so I think the source just gets all the favours so I've got it on top to beat number three Tavi Run who was really impressive last time out it was um, all the way win beat Dogmatic and it was a sensational effort it's that this is also always uh, proven to have a lot of ability just haven't done so uh, this preparation in, in its previous runs before that win at Caulfield at this track and but that was just a sensational run last time out of the on speed runners it'll be really hard to, to, to chase in for third, I like number two, Aristocratic Miss. This horse coming out of a really good narrow win over Sweet, Me Sweet Mischief at um, Santa Lakeside. It was a sensational battle up the straight. If you get the chance, go back and watch the replay of that race. It was such a tough win by Aristocratic Miss. I was on Sweet Mischief that day. I thought it was a real good thing and was <laughs> was spewing when Aristocratic Miss was wouldn't lie down. But I thought that, that was a sensational run and it could do so here again. Prior to that, it's got four behind Shawnee and Heavily Emperor and also Fabric. So... Some good form lines bring into this. Doesn't mind the soft going. It's had four starts on it for a win and a place. So I think it'll be in the finish as well. And uh, if a fourth, I do like number five, Crimson Ace, who I thought won really nicely last time out. The Cranbird all beat a benchmark 64, but it'll get through the going. It's had four starts on the soft track, but two wins and a placing. So just to recap the numbers on the sixth, number one, Juna Pal on top. In for second, number three, Tavi Run. In for third, number two, Aristocratic Miss. And in for fourth, number five, Crimson Ace. Race number seven, 1200 meter race. Uh, looking at the speed map here, uh, News Girl will probably use the inside as with Great Bratsky from Barrier 2 to get forward. Tell me will be quite prominent, so Gadotin will be trying to get to the speed as well as number 10 Street Icon from Barrier 9 who resumes. And look, this horse, I think if it gets the speed, number 10 Street Icon, I think it's paying huge odds and it's probably my best each way better the day. Uh, if it comes back to anything like it was producing last prep, it'll beat these. Uh, if Linda Meach gets to the front, she knows how to run a, ride a front run, and we all know that. And um, Look, this horse said was it, it, absolutely superb first up at Bairnsdale, one that's made him really impressively. Then beat Metronome at the Santa Lakeside track, again impressively. Then it went and was beaten by Kofia, but there's actually you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that sort of form. Kofia, of course, has been in, uh, racing well um, in recent time, and he's a proven group performer, and that was a group two race. So I just think, stepping back to this class, it can beat these if it shows up to its best, and if Linda Meach gets to the front, which it should do, it should uh, make it very hard to, to chase down. So I think the each way odds has got paying really nicely, and I'm happy to have it on top. Uh, to beat n number 12, Sweet Jazz, who really did close off nicely last time at Caulfield, was only just beaten by half a length by Voila. Uh, I think it will turn the tables. It stays at 54 kilos, whereas Voila uh, goes from the 55 up to the 56 and a half. So just that weight swing, I think, will suit Sweet Jazz better and also being third up. So I think it'll be hard to beat as well. It'll be charging home from the back. So I've got it in for second. If a third, I do like uh, number one, Tell Me, who, uh, of course, doesn't mind it, uh, the, the soft track. If we get in the heavy range, I'll be a little bit more cautious. But this horse also ran pretty nice the last time out behind Voila. Um, so that form's pretty good. Prior to that was two lengths off Wagner at... Um, sorry, I just lost it there. At uh, Rose Hill. Uh, and then also, um, you know, I just think that if it, it'll be sitting behind the speed. Might get a really nice run, the box seat. 
and just if it gets out and gets a bit of luck, it'll be uh, pretty, pretty hard to run down. Uh, in for fourth, I do like uh, this horse number two, Golden Halo for Dan Bowman. Uh, this horse enjoys the soft track as well. Four starts on it for two wins and a placing. It was really good last time out at the Flemington straight behind Geetrash. Uh, chased home nicely. Prior to that, beat Southern Missile brilliantly at, at Swan Hill by, by two and a half lengths. So this horse is really around the mark. And prior to that, looking at um, four behind Lady Cosmology and Valor Road in group racing at uh, Morphinville. So this horse will be up to it. I think it's um, paying some nice odds as well. So just to recap the numbers on race number seven, I do like number... Uh, 10 Street Icon on top. In for second, like number 12, Sweet Jazz. In for third, number one, Tell Me. In for fourth, number two, Golden Halo. Race number eight on the card, uh, 1100 meter race. This is the Sir John Monash Stakes. It's the uh, feature of the day. So much speed this race. Jungle Edge is drawing barrier 14, which is a bit unfortunate, but he always gets the front, so he's going to just be have to do a lot of work, but he'll motor across. Hart Concord will be up there. Miss Norway will use the inside barrier. Malibu's style of Barry 3 will be getting looking to get forward, I'd say. Oak Door usually goes out and runs, and Spinning to Wheel will be up there. So it's just an absolute ton of speed in this race, and I think it'll really set up nicely uh, for... Sorry, just, just give bear with me one moment. Um, all that speed in the race will set up nicely for this horse number 4, Ken's Dream, who resumes off a uh, long break, of course, the former Darren Weir horse, now with Kira Mara, David Eustace, uh, this horse was brilliant resuming last time out at Mooney Valley. It's point four length by now. Luca was flying at that point at Mooney Valley. Uh, then it was spelled again. They had a really good trial recently uh, at uh, Stall, and I think it'll just come in this race really nicely. It doesn't mind the soft tracks. They had four starts on over two wins, two placings. One start in the heavy for a win. Uh, enjoys running at Caulfield. I think this horse can be back to its best here, and with all that speed in the race, it's going to really come in nicely. It's paying $17, I think. It's got the class and it really can run these down uh, with those wet track form and also being first up. I just think this horse can explode and uh, run over the top of him. So I'm happy to have it on top to win. Uh, in for second, I like number 14, Crack the Code. I think this horse was obviously uh, resumed brilliantly at Mooney Valley. It produced a uh, storming run from the back to charge over him late. Then it won nicely here at Caulfield twice in a row. Twice being used girl, of course, goes around the uh, start prior. Then it was really disappointing behind um, Embrace Me in that race at Mooney Valley. Uh, that was, of course, the Group 3 and uh, was spelled. And then but comes back here. Um, look, has only had the one start in the soft and failed. Um, but this horse enjoys running at Corford. It's had two starts on the two uh, wins. And I think first up at Fresh, it'll be run a nice race down the bottom of the weights. So I've got it in for second, number 14, Crack the Code. In for third, I die at number three, Bandipore. This horse is now, of course, uh, former James Cummings horse now with Richard Lamming. Uh, won really well, being Malibu style last time out. Of course, Malibu style came out one at Flemington last week. Backs up again. The seven-day backup. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, this horse enjoys the soft going. It's had six starts on it for four wins and a placing. Enjoys racing at Caulfield. Five starts, three wins and a placing. This horse will be well in the finish once again. I just uh, and think it'll get some good cover into the race and with all that speed on. It might just be better. If they're not quite running off from the back, um, and we will know this by race number eight, I'll be switching to Bandipore. But if they can run off from the back, I think it'll be finishing in third. Uh, if a fourth, I do like uh, number nine, Hart Concord. This horse, I think, will get through the wet going. It's had four starts on heavy for two wins and a placing, and it's had one start and soft for a win. Uh, this, it was a really good run last time out, 0.6 the length behind, top striker. I think off the on-speed runners, it'll stick on nicely and uh, be the finish. So just to recap the numbers on the race number eight, uh, I'll do like number four, Ken's Dream, on top to beat. Number uh, 14, Crack the Code. In the third, number three, Bandipore. And for fourth, number... Uh, Oh, sorry, number nine, Hart Concord. Now, I left number, the favourite, number 13, Soothing, out of the race. This horse got a lot of ability and, of course, first up stats are sensational. It's had four first up runs for three wins. But I just think that stepping into this uh, company straight away, a little bit of a query. Um, as trials leading in, its first trial was pretty average and then it um, was really good in its last trial on the heavy track at Ramwick. But just, sort of, I don't know, I just got a bit of a query. I just couldn't put it in um, first up personally. I just think that... Um, first up in a benchmark 78. It's a little bit different to come up against these horses um, first up. So just willing to leave it out, but I'm pretty happy to be proven wrong. So I do have a high opinion of Soothing, and I'll definitely be getting on. As it, I just think that it's a bit of a hard task first up, and I wouldn't be willing to take the favourite odds. If it was paid a bit more, I'd probably be willing to slide it in. 
Uh, anyway, moving on, race number nine, 1700 metre race, benchmark 90. Uh, checking the speed map here, I'd say that Shrouded Miss will be quite forward off the inside barrier, as will Tinker most. So I'd say Abertino finds the top, where Rebellious Lord will sit outside of it, and Come On Carl will, will be uh, towards the front as well. But not a whole lot of speed in this race. And uh, as such, look, I think that this horse number four, Master Shahood, will be able to run on nicely. Uh, but I am going to have another three Bedford on top, because this horse was just that impressive last time out. My leader says 800 back to the 17. I think this horse might might just be a little switching up before it then uh, steps up to further distance like we saw last time out. But uh, that, that run at Sandown Hillside track um, in the midweek race was absolutely terrific. It was absolutely smashed them. It uh, went, went around the field, just really put the foot down and uh, put uh, that field to uh, to bed at that, that time out. And uh, my only concern is that on, on the soft going, it's had uh, three starts for no wins, no placings. But it doesn't mind the heavy. Um, of course, that was on a heavy track at um, Sandown. So I think uh, if we can get in that heavy range, Bedford will be extremely hard to beat again. It will, will be close enough. We'll probably be midfield and be able to come off and swing around and do exactly what we did last time out at Sandown. As I mentioned prior, Travis, my friend, comes out of that form line. So we'll get an idea on how it runs in a few races prior. But I'm pretty keen to go with number three, Bedford, on top. To beat number four, Master Shahood, who has really good first up stats, five starts for three wins and a placing. Uh, it's had a win and a placing from three soft starts. And uh, it's its first Australian run after coming across from Great Britain, where it uh, run it predominantly over the 2,000 to the 3,000 metres, including a 3,172 metre hurdle race. Um, this also was a really impressive winning at Mornington. Then it went to Sound Hillside Track and was beat by all two hooding and has been uh, spelled since. Had two really good trials at Rose Hill and Randwick um, and it comes to this race. I'm really interested in it. I think it need, uh, the betting will be the key for that horse and it's paying uh, $9 odds. So I'm really keen to have it in for second. I think it'll uh, run a nice race. If a third is a favourite, number nine shrouded and miss this horse, of course, will be right up there. It's got barrier one to get forward and it was really good running on from the back last time out um, at Caulfield. But I think it'll try and do similar to what it did at Sandown Lakeside Track um, and be towards the, the leading pack, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, provide them something to run down. Um, so I've got it in for third. In for fourth, number seven, Tinker Most. This horse goes around big odds again. As I just mentioned, it did beat um, the favourite Trout in this last time out, so can't really understand why it's going around $16. And I think it'll be um, on the speed, uh, be, be close enough once again. It'll be really hard to run down, especially if it stays in the soft range. So happy to have it in with the numbers as well. So just to recap the... the um, the numbers for race number nine, number three, Bedford on top to beat number four, Master Shahood. In for third, number nine, Shroud and Miss. And in for fourth, number seven, Tinkamosa. Uh, we've got a bit of a uh, watch out for Al Galail. Uh, this horse loves running at Caulfield. It's had four starts on it for one win and two placings. It's never had a go at heavy. And on the soft going, it's had four starts for two placings. So its wet track stats aren't great. So for me, I'm just waiting until it gets on to the, uh, back on top of the ground before I can put it on top, and it's going to have to carry a lot of weight in this race. So for me, I'm looking to avoid it. So that's uh, my preview at um, Caulfield. I hope you enjoy. Uh, stick and keep an eye out uh, for my 